Okay. Um, so, hey, Justin Rogers Oculus again. Um, so, building a WebVR content pipeline, what, what we're finding is that as we start to get more experiences into VR, that the, the content is really not optimized for the web at all. Um, it's usually optimized for some engine or whatever that was loading it. Um, and so, we want to talk about an entire pipeline starting from the developer through the server, through the client, that starts to talk about how, how do we stream VR? Because I feel like VR is right now based around a downloaded package and we want to be able to stream it. Um, so only recently are web developers even really using uh, build systems. And when I say recent, I mean like the last five years. So maybe that's not, maybe that, that's a long time for some people. Um, but I've been in the web for a long time. Um, and VR content is highly complicated. So it has a lot of meshes, textures, shaders, skins, and VR or game developers are used to running it through these huge content pipelines. And so we don't have the equivalent for the web. Uh, this is a place where we can learn a lot from the game industry. Uh, because there's a lot of tools and insights there on what they do. And we basically need to translate all of these into web tools now. And so if you kind of look at my, my content pipeline, you know, a VR developer might import, optimize, compress, and package. Holy crap, they just did a bunch of work. Then they'll upload the package and then download the package. So by that point, all of that optimization is already on the client. They'll probably optimize again and then load it up. The web guy will literally copy a file to his raw store on the web and then load it. And of course, if that's a 360 image, we know that that's already too big for the, for the GPU to handle. Um, so for the developer, uh, we basically need to build these kind of build, optimize, and package steps. And so there are some existing build technologies, but they're all focused on 2D site problems. Webpack, Browserify, they all deal with JS uh, and maybe some HTML and some CSS. They don't really deal with huge meshes, images, or GLTF. Um, plugins can help here, so we probably need to start writing those plugins. Uh, packaging for the web is not an ideal solution. I don't think we want to move to a web where we upload a 200 megabyte file and download a 200 megabyte file. That kind of is an anti-pattern. Um, and so those require large downloads and they install. We don't like that. Uh, it also hurts iterative development. If you have to package something for iterative development, it just kills it. Uh, so we need a bunch of native tools for VR repackaged and wrapped so that they're, they're web ready. Uh, more con uh, basically more content export tools that have web targets. So even Adobe has saved a web for all their images. Nobody freaking uses it. They just upload you know, a half a megabyte of image data or metadata up. Um, but we need to make sure that these tools are capable of pu uh, pushing out web content. And then I think that the GLTF uh, is a great evolution. Uh, I don't think it's a silver bullet, but I think it's a great common ground. I think it's something that we should definitely be using. Uh, for the server, there's a lot of stuff here, uh, CDN, cores, beyond URLs, uh, that we should be thinking about. So first, smart servers and CDNs can be offloading a bunch of the optimization from the developer. So I, so I should be able to upload the stuff, and then uh, basically the server should be able to do device and size optimizations, things like powers of two textures and MIP levels, uh, dependent on the device retrieving. Uh, we can also do some of the compression uh, in the cloud as well. So I think uh, the difference here is an image compression and texture compression technologies are, are for different reasons. An image compression technology is to download and to maintain image quality. A texture compression is for upload into the GPU. And ideally, we'd be getting more compressed textures down and less images. So we need to move away from basically JPEG and PNG. Um, basically, we also need some widely available high quality content. And this is kind of my course push. I want somebody to do this. Somebody put a whole bunch of free, fast, like textures, models, et cetera, up online that I can access with cores so that I can m mash them into any, any website. Um, and then th there's a new concept here that I put up, which is kind of cross URL or CDN hash addressable content. Uh, if I go to your CDN and I go to somebody else's CDN for the same thing, I'm gonna download two times into the cache. Is there a way for me to be able to detect that at this, like detect that as the client or send up enough information that I can know that I, I've already got that, that down? Um, and then a bunch of HTTP2 optimizations, definitely more server push. So a server of a VR scene could know all of the textures and meshes that it needs to download up front and basically push those down. So this would be GLTF on the server, uh, perhaps. Uh, and then a bunch of client progressive enhancement. So our foreseeable future is mobile devices, gear, daydream, cardboard. Uh, so we need to think about uh, having low quality textures and things that we can import first and get that scene up and then start down to the higher quality textures. Uh, we want it to be, again, no install, no long download, no wait. So the whole progressive texture loading with vertex color fallback is really nice. Off-white, blurry clouds, crisp photo clouds. Your user is gonna love you if you give them that over five seconds of black. Uh, service workers can predict 
prefetching cache. Can also offload some of the stuff from the server. Um, yeah, I'll move on. <laughs> Told you I wasn't going to get through all of it. Okay, so I, I, I did well once and I failed once.